Um, 2020 21 TOK presentations. Um, so, uh, just a little bit about the TOK presentations. Um, first of all, students worked really hard on these to uh, uh, present this to you today. Um, basically, what they've done is, is they've taken um, a uh, what we call a real life situation, um, maybe better known as a current event, though it doesn't have to be current, that current. Um, basically, an event that has happened maybe in the last 200 years or so. Um, um, so, what this question does in the context of the real life situation is um, it's um, asking the more uh, abstract, if you will, about the real life situation. Uh, not so much uh, right or wrong, um, but uh, how do we know what we know about that situation? Um, so it's going a little bit deeper. So the idea, the schema is, is that to present you with a real life situation, um, they'll ask a knowledge question based on that. Um, and they will kind of uh, mull it over. They will, um, they will probe it, they will investigate it, uh, and uh, maybe sparking other real life, sorry, other knowledge questions. Um, then they'll return to that real life situation with uh, a, a new perspective on things, uh, a new perspective on it. Um, and it may uh, also prompt them to think about uh, other real-life situations in that context. Um, so that's the schema of the presentation. Um, if you want to watch for that, um, I will be uh, bringing you guys in the corner as I listen. Um, so I understand yours kind of run high, but let me assure you that um, you're in good company. We're all supporting you, so, um, and a little bit of nervousness is okay, too. Okay, so with that, um, we'll have Vito presenting today. Um, so, cheers for going first. Um, okay, all right, so I'll turn it over to Vito. Okay. Good morning, everyone. And this presentation will discuss about what kind of information and knowledge are admissible to be stored, the title is admissibility of knowledge store. I was inspired to make this presentation from Jane Winter's article, Will History Survive the Digital Age, which presents the problems of scholars facing digital age, lamenting that the technological development cannot ensure the preservation of every data of school. The article also communicates that the digital preservation of historical data and knowledge are the continuous problem and the challenge for humanity to pose. So the knowledge question for my presentation is should we store the knowledge that people do not consume in present given that people differently determine the practicality of knowledge? The humanity's reason to store the knowledge comes from our desire to have a perfect image of the world in order to reach full perception. Humans advance their studies and extend the amount of information in which Winters, the author of the article of the robot situation, questions about the necessity of storing to that extent in which humans cannot even acquire within their lifetime. Therefore, this presentation will focus on humans' desire to reach full perception, challenges and conditions for knowledge and information to survive in history. In order to clarify my points, two AOKs of art and human science will be compared with the three WOKs, the ways of knowing, the first says perception, faith, and memory. So firstly, we need to define some essential terms before we begin with the discussion. So first of all, knowledge is a notion or claim that will justify based on the information, and this may appear variously in spiritual or physical form. Second, information is a refined form of data that one can use to enhance the understanding of knowledge. For instance, however, if one uses uh, knowledge that already exists to enhance or validate the understanding of new knowledge that hasn't been discovered yet, the knowledge that already exists becomes information for this case of presentation. Store is a process of knowledge that is kept in oneself. 
So it may be stored either spiritually or virtually. And for virtual store of knowledge, it's because new technologies are introduced over time. Lastly, spirituality is a quality of concerning human spirit, which involves the recognition of feeling, sense, or belief. And the spiritual store of knowledge is a pursuit of knowledge for its own sake. My analysis of knowledge question will be divided into two sections, which are spiritual knowledge store and the virtual store of knowledge. So my first claim about spiritual knowledge store is that obtaining information or knowledge awakes your spirituality, which stimulates people to discover new knowledge. My claim has a strong connection with the first WOK of sense perception because the process of learning experience is strongly based on perceptual experience, which is also known as impurity. And these perceptual experiences also in it also awakes your spirituality as seen in my real life situation, which is Ethan's mystic and esoteric spiritual practices in art education that has resulted in legacy of the rationalist and materialist philosophy of design and architecture that still remains worldwide these days. The re-examination of mysticism and the personal non-religious approach to spirituality contains a foundation to new approaches to art and art education. Even Ethan's obsession with a quote, Clint and Kandinsky's essential transcendent notion of life, it was inevitable for Bauhaus to reflect the spiritual aspect of art. And the denial of spirituality in art a true dominant aspect of art scene is by no means a fait accompli. And the ancient impulse towards art as a spiritual inquiry and mystical practice is an important part of modernism and still these days by a lot of people is considered as one of the most essential dimensions of truly effective art. And also, one must be wary in attributing discovery wholly to any one person because a lot of discovery has a long and precarious history. One finds a bit here, another a bit here, and the third step, or even further, succeeds when a genius part of it is together to create a decisive contribution. Therefore, the discovery of knowledge needs overwhelming importance of spiritual and intellectual freedom. However, the counterclaim may argue that the advancement of study and enlightenment may change humans into spiritualized people. And ego, in the context of this presentation, means for narcissism. So, the psychological insight and capability of ignoring the conventional boundaries, ability to redirect the societal narrative can create a societal disharmony. Determining whether to store or discard the spiritually obtained information depends on the individual because knowledge is face-based. Whether you obtain the knowledge from the store or the others, it's still kept in person. So it's one's choice to question themselves whether to digest or throw away the information they obtain, whether spiritually or virtually. And also, however, if one wants to store the knowledge in the way they want, they can share with the others and let others to understand what they obtained. This might require the virtual store of knowledge. So this raises an interesting question. Can information still be practical, even if you don't use it? I will start with the counterclaim and the second part of virtual store of knowledge is introduced here, which is that there's no value in storing in practical knowledge. And for instance, in a sense, there's something really deeply, deeply practical about writing a scholar of journals. It's necessary prerequisite for keeping an academic job. So therefore, for scholars, it's extremely practical. However, for carpenters, for instance, it's totally useless. But then table saw, for everyone is useless beside the carpenters. And this example shows that a lot of scholarly research are arcane in terms of thinking practical in sense of what is useful to do to get by in the world we have right now. There might not be any value in storing them virtually. So for some others, uh, impractical knowledge might waste up a space for practical knowledge that is valid only within the limits of its self-reinforcing construct. So what role does information play if nobody accesses it? I think that the development of modern technology has enhanced us to store enormous amount of information. Uh, the more advanced the studies become, the more time we have to reflect on its practicality. And the practical, the term, in this part, it, it is understood as a sense of what it takes to make a token society, to have a certain degree of self-sufficiency. And the knowledge may get useful in the future, even if it's not right now. And it may be question whether precise learning is necessary to that extent. But I thought if we really have no problem with even storing the attempts that might look useless other than the necessary studies, I thought, why not? We can store even all, all the knowledge that we have for the future. 
So the real life situation for my second claim is a usefulness of useless knowledge written by Abraham Flexner, which says that the scholars such as poets, painters, and musicians devote such learning such intellectual and abstract knowledge because they hope to get some results, the positive results in the future. The preservation of knowledge for future results are hugely influenced from memory. And the third WOK of memory is introduced here. And in TOK, there's a three meanings of memory, which are personal, factual, and practical. However, in this context of this presentation, all these meanings of memories are unified. So there's no distinction between each other. And the important part of what it means to know is to be able to remember it. And for memory, that's why you can only preserve the knowledge that has been either obtained from sources or other people, or even by itself as well. Flaxner stresses that uh, the pursuit of knowledge for its own sake, through memory or other ways of knowing, has in fact already shown to be the powerful force in the world. He writes that in the end, utility resulted. Flaxner also writes that, but it was never a criterion to which researchers ceaseless experimentation could be subjected. Hence, the need for institutions where pure research can be performed, even at the expense of pursuing ideas that prove to be invalid or inconsequential. And this applies to every other expression of the untrammeled human spirit. In conclusion, from a practical point of view, outwardly, intellectual knowledge and information is a useless form of activity that man knows because it procures a greater satisfaction than are otherwise obtainable. So every information differs from each other and values different ways of knowing. And that's why the way everyone determines the admissibility of knowledge is different because impractical and present doesn't mean it's useless. And this applies to art, math, history, science, and everywhere that content to acquire knowledge. However, in modern area, information is overflowing. So, but contrary to the concern with the knowledge store, people cannot and even don't try to consume all the knowledge that we have. So, yeah, the topic of information and knowledge store is extremely difficult to be explored as it is extremely subjective and the way everyone determines its admissibility of knowledge store is different. However, we can still understand that uh, the scholars have won the right to, to keep devoting learning intellectual knowledge and information as they please to do it and it has already proven to have a positive consequences in the future as it did in the past. Thank you very much. Questions? difficult to explore because the spiritual the term itself is extremely abstract and it's very broad but for the context of his presentation it's about it's, the spiritual knowledge store is something that is aimed for the result of spiritual revolution which is defined by Kandinsky in his book concerning the spiritual and art where he says that uh, for spiritual knowledge store it must be understood valued remembered and expanded and the spiritual knowledge is basically a merely the witness volition to the acting mind and body. So this is what I define as a spiritual knowledge store for this context. And also, it's about the intellectual knowledge for expressing their inner life. And in abstract non-material terms. So Kandinsky and also other, other artists as well, and Johannes Eaton also says that for artists like musicians and painters, they they depend upon the material world for music. So they shouldn't be really like they shouldn't be really depending on the material ideas with it. So it's more based on something that is extremely abstract. So that's why the whole term spiritual art. Um, so example for this is it's very broad, and if I use one example for spiritual knowledge, uh, the movement of triangle. Uh, it, it might be unfamiliar to everyone, and movement of triangle is one example. It's like a structure of how abstract artwork is working. 
And in this movement of triangle, there's a very subjective structures that is happening in every artist's artwork. And in order to create this structure, it's, in, it's essential to have a spiritual knowledge store. And it, this is not something that, is, that can be obtained through a virtual knowledge store because it's about enlightenment. It's about uh, enlightenment through the person. It's something that has been obtained through person. So it's not something that's obtained through honors or sources. So this can be an example of spiritual. Yes. Um, what, what would be your concept in a full perception? Oh, full perception. So full perception, uh, it's very simple. So as we all know, human's desire is infinite. So that everyone tries to kind of reach the perfection, the level of perfection. And the term full perception here would mean to be able to have that ability of looking at the world and to, in order to have all the ability that they want to desire to have. So this is some kind of cycle that happens infinitely and I believe that this will continue to happen. information is a different thing. So people might think that there's a lot of, it is true that there's a lot of similarity between knowledge and information. However, the important thing is that information is just like a supplementary material that one can use to enhance the understanding of knowledge. So by collecting the informations and obtaining them either through, so, either through spiritually or virtually, this may create the result of discovery of new knowledge. So information as he says, it's a refined, for, refined form of data that one can use to kind of create a new discovery or a new knowledge. And also, I also mentioned the example about the knowledge that already exists being information, because knowledge can also be the form of data. And in this context of presentation, information is just some kind of material that one can use to enhance the understanding of something new that has been discovered. So therefore, the knowledge that already exists has already been validated by the knowledge that existed in the past. So that's why the knowledge that already exists becomes information. And the knowledge, the new knowledge that one may, one may discover in the future becomes a knowledge. More questions? It's like an anathema to most spiritual journey. And it's like something that can get in the way of the spiritual awareness. So the counterclaim is saying that the investment of study and enlightenment change humans into spiritualized ego. And this is like once a spiritual past has been addressed, ego can blind one to spiritual awareness of others that limits the evolution of spiritual understanding. Quite esoteric. The, spirit, the word spiritual and ego is kind of it's extremely subjective because spiritual is also the way they define ego is more leaning towards egoism of what Nietzsche describes about. And like the spirit the spiritualists are saying that people are selfless and that's the problem why people are not having any ego in themselves. But the problem is that the fact that they're already providing the reasons and like a reasons and judgments and justification about their opinion, that's already showing that they have an ego. So basically they're wrong. It's just like a contradiction. Yeah. 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 Any more questions? Am 
I'm enjoying the freedom now. <laughs> Almost. Almost. I hope it was a Well, uh, if no more questions, then thank you, Tito. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. White. Thank you, Vito. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay. Um, so that said, uh, we were uh, scheduled to um, have Rosa and Jeff present, but I think both are feeling a little ill. So Rosa will go, will go Thursday. Okay, and Jeff, I have to speak to him. Um, so, um, next, uh, this coming Thursday, it will be Rosa, um, uh, Nina, and uh, Sarah will present. Okay. All right, so this concludes our session. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, <coughs> enjoy it. Thank you very much.